This almost slipped by me, but one of our viewers, Alan, wrote to me about it, and we have to look at it. Former Trump propagandist Stephen Bannon actually sat down and did a long form interview with the failed former president, Donald Trump. And it's fascinating because this is this is sort of like a vicious circle that we're going to look at here. Trump tells many of the lies during this interview with Steve Bannon that arguably Steve Bannon created or at least Bannon created the sort of approach to politics that leads to Trump being so comfortable telling these lies. It's really interesting to see, I guess you could say, the chef eating his protege's food. I don't know exactly what metaphor or analogy makes sense. So let's look at some of this. The, the formatting. This is from America's Real America's Voice War Room with Steve Bannon, and their video player is a mess. And technologically, it's all a mess. So I'm going to have to kind of scrub through the video to moments that my colleague John flagged for me. The first thing here is after years of the whole crooked Hillary thing, which Trump recently reassigned to crooked Joe Biden. Trump now is saying he never actually thought Crooked Hillary was that great of a nickname, which is weird because he used it for half a decade. I have old problem, but yeah, I think they like to say that for other reasons. You know, like to say he's oh, got a big problem now because you've given him a nickname. Well, I've yesterday changed. was a, yesterday changed, was a big day. I changed. I decided that uh, I've decided that Hillary's cooked. Uh, we can't do too much better. You know, I always felt I never felt the Crooked Hillary was a great name. I thought it was accurate, but it never flowed like some you, of the you other. You have names. letters in here from Bill Clinton. You talk about Bill Clinton. So uh, st I, when, let's be really frank, OK? Do you think when Bannon says that this this interview was clearly done the day after the rally at which Trump announced I'm changing crooked Hillary to crooked Joe Biden, do you think Bannon really thinks that it's a big deal for Trump to change the nicknames? Or is Bannon just playing the sycophant suck up? that people around Trump are expected to play. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. All right, let's now go and bear with me here. This is just the way we're going to have to do it. Next, Trump says that Rudy Giuliani was the best mayor of New York ever and that New York has now collapsed, which is news to everybody in New York. He uh, went away from his policy of guns, you know, what he was doing with the gun stuff, which basically was started by Rudy. Look, Rudy was the greatest mayor in the history of New York. Was and the crimes. I mean, I don't know how you, you were there. That. You were there when it, when the city started to collapse. I saw it all. I saw it collapse. I saw it come back. Rudy saw. And you've it. seen it collapse again. Now it's collapsing again. Yeah, now it's uh, at a level. And the one thing that's different, we had a very powerful police force that wasn't being utilized. Now many of those great policemen and women have left and gone to Texas. It's mostly not true. And NYPD is actually doing fine. But remember that there's actually some interesting political history here, which is that Rudy Giuliani benefited uh, dramatically. Uh, and it's crazy to say it because it was such a tragic event. Rudy Giuliani benefited dramatically uh, in the way that George W. Bush did from 9-11. Right. George W. Bush saw 80 plus percent approval in the immediate wake of 9-11, squandered it with the Iraq war. And Rudy Giuliani also became mayor 9-11. And ultimately, it became all he talked about for, for about a decade. Um, but th that is certainly a, uh, a claim th that New York is collapsing, which is hard to find anywhere as far as data or facts are concerned. Trump pulling out the idea that America has gone communist. And what's really interesting to me about this is you'll say, well, but David, Trump's been saying America's communist for, you know, since Joe Biden, the day Joe Biden was inaugurated. What's interesting is to see Bannon in the context of having to react to it. One of the greatest. And I think if we win in uh, 24, I think it's going to be when we win at 24. Yeah, the country can't. So. The, co the country can't take. Can't I don't take. think it can take it. No, I don't think can't take I don't think we're going to have a country. You know, this is a businessman. Yeah, right? I don't think. Well, even as a politician, uh, they've weaponized. You would know this very well. They've weaponized the Justice Department. They've <laughs> weaponized the FBI. They're doing things that a communist country would do, a Marxist country would do. It's a very Did you thing. ever think this country would get to that? I never thought it would be that bad. And you dealt with some tough people. Yeah. Now, here is where I know Bannon is just doing the sycophant suck up stuff. Bannon, Trump may not be smart enough to know that there's nothing Marxist going on in the United States. 
Bannon is smart enough to know that there's nothing Marxist happening in the United States. And so that's where I start to see this and say Bannon is absolutely playing a character here. He's playing the sycophant suck up character. Here's Trump with his covid conspiracies, for lack of a better term. Talking Hunter, about, yeah, Hunter talking Biden. about Hunter Biden and saying it was Russian disinformation. I always think, what do you think Putin is saying when every week they came up with another thing, Russia, Russia, Russia? They never blamed anything on China because they were all getting rich from China. The one know? way you can tell he's illegitimate is the lack of respect that they have for him throughout the world. Boy. Now, that's factually untrue. If you actually survey people around the world, Respect for the American presidency and the country has recovered dramatically since Joe Biden became president. They just lo- they love telling this lie. He goes to Saudi. When we, you went to Saudi, we went to Saudi Arabia. I mean, you know, the military's out. The thing they go, he's in an SUV with a fist bump. The mullahs don't respect him. The KGB in Moscow doesn't respect him. Well, you she, know the fist bump. She who is right here for the historic yeah. oh, summit. Was, no respect for him. Spent three days here. We had a, a great. We developed a great relationship. Now, once COVID came, it was like, you know, that was that was a step too far. I mean, that cost the world millions of lives and about 60 trillion dollars. So nobody can ever pay for that. The lives and 60 trillion dollars. But they'll pay something. They'll pay something. You know, I got would you demand reparations from China in in some form? You can't. There's no such thing as 60 trillion dollars. You could add 20 Chinas. Okay, you can't. But they cost the world. I figured it cost 60 trillion dollars worldwide and, you know, millions and millions of lives. What came out of the Wuhan lab? You remember, I was the first one to say, I said it came from the Wuhan lab. It came right out of Wuhan. So Trump, uh, you know, kind of reviving that one. Then there's a moment which I can't play in its entirety because uh, I don't want anybody to, you know, have a medical event from watching five minutes of this. But he he starts lying about immigration for five straight minutes. And it's really crazy. And take care of American citizens. People don't realize you also use tariffs to help secure the border. Hundred percent. The, the, the Mexico started getting, you know. Well, they would have never done it. I said to uh, the president of Mexico, who I really like, I have to tell you, he's great. You know, he wouldn't. I don't think to this day he's even acknowledged. He said that election was a rigged election. He said it happened to him ten years before, <laughs> and he's a socialist. But you know what? Uh, he's a terrific guy. But I said, listen, <laughs> uh, we're building a wall, and we built. I built hundreds of miles of wall. That was my first hint that what they wanted to do is let people pour into our country from prisons, <laughs> from mental institutions. There what, you go. What they have allowed. Only the best. Only the best. Only the best. Insane asylum. You know, insane asylum, that's silence of the lamb type. OK. And I don't know why nobody goes, sir, it's silence of the lambs, not silence of the lamb. So continuing to tell those very same lies about uh, the border. None of that is happening. And then he moved on to a new favorite target where he lies about electric vehicles. And the electric vehicle lies are interesting to me because it's such a silly scapegoat. And it's so obvious that this is the way that vehicle technology is going. It just seems like one of these fights that's a very dumb fight to pick. It'll only work for a little while. Everything's the opposite of what it should be. We don't want to be energy independent. We want to spend instead of a dollar eighty seven a gallon. We want to spend nine dollars a gallon. We want to go to all electric cars that go for two hours and then you get stuck in the middle of a, a road and there's nobody. You, you might as well forget the car. How do you get it? <laughs> doesn't happen. I mean, quite literally doesn't happen. You know, my electric cars range is three hundred and thirty miles. Uh, went New York City to Montreal with, you know, one stop, which was an optional stop. But for a diaper change, not for me, but for the baby. It why are they attacking electric cars? Because they've generated an environment in which people like to hear it and like to see it without really apparently understanding the truth of it. Now, no Trump interview is complete without big dumps. Republicans have to fight. I'll give you an example. Do you think we the have, are we tough have, enough to get this done? I don't know. That's look, the one thing. Uh, the Democrats have horrible policy, but they stick together and they cheat. The Republicans don't want to cheat. I said to a man in Pennsylvania, I love Pennsylvania. I did great. I was up by almost 900,000 votes. All of a sudden I was even. I said, what happened? And you see the chart and then it, there was a dump, big dump. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. Trump was amazed by the size of the Pennsylvania dump. Uh, He did attack Alvin Bragg. I'm going to skip over that, even though I have it in my notes. He did attack Ron DeSantis. And that's another interesting moment here. And it's curious to see 
Steve Bannon's reaction to that. We're going to take a look at uh, the DeSantis attacks. And again, remember, Trump obsessed with DeSantis, despite the fact that he's still not announced anything. Because this is the Donald Trump that America first met. And now you're under assault from everywhere. Total assault. Total assault. Because we're winning in the polls. If I wasn't well, the up polls 40, 50, in the polls, yeah, the polls are 62, 16. Well, DeSantis is uh, failing badly. Ronda Sanctimonious. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's always bad. You endorse somebody, he's dead. He's he's over his political dead. career. He's going to be looking for a job. He'll be lucky to get a job. Comes to me, begs me for a endorsement. I give it to him. He ends up winning the election, winning the nomination, winning the election by numbers that you wouldn't believe. I mean, he was so far down, yeah. he was gone. And then they shout to him a couple of years later, will you run against the president? I have no comment. Now, no comment means the answer is yes. Now, that is what this is all about. That is the, uh, the most honest thing Trump has said in a long time. This is the narcissism full fledged. How dare DeSantis not simply say, I will not challenge our great orange leader, Donald Trump. That's what Trump expects. That's what Trump considers to be loyalty. All right. Last thing, continuing to make these silly promises about how quickly he will solve the situation in Ukraine. He would have never gone into vice president in a million years. And even the Democrats, they did a poll the other day, 94 percent say if Trump was president, you wouldn't have that horrible catastrophe. And so many people are being killed, many more than they report. When they blow up a city, Steve, and you see all those big buildings, and then they say two people were injured, it's it's much worse than anybody understands. I would have that settled in 24 hours. Yep. And of course, and this came up in my interview with Lex Friedman, the insistence on Putin wouldn't have invaded Ukraine had I been president. It's not really the big gotcha that some of them believe it to be, because it's completely plausible that Putin would have seen other ways to grow his power if Trump were president rather than Joe Biden. So a bizarre interview with Stephen Bannon, but where Trump is right. And at the end of the day, when the rubber meets the road, it, it's the numbers that matter. Uh, the polling. One of our sponsors today is fume. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad part from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award winning device that does exactly that. Fume is not electronic. There's no vapor or harmful chemicals. Fume is just a delicious flavored air that makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts, which is great for fidgeting, which can be great for people breaking bad habits. Look at what people online are saying. They weren't sure what to expect, but ended up loving the taste and the feel. Stopping is something lots of people put off because it's difficult to do. But switching to fume is easy and enjoyable. There's no reason that you can't be the next fume success story. Head on over to tryfume.com and use the code Pacman to save 10%. When you get the journey pack, which comes with the device and three flavors, the link is down below.